I'm back in my old spot again. Thanks to a new tablet mount for my old tripod friend. Greetings one and all, and welcome back to Tom's Hit Parade. By the way, I invite you to hit that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up if you like what you see, share this video with your friends, and leave me your thoughts down in the comment section. I'd really appreciate it. So yes, uh, you guys recognize, my longtime viewers will recognize this background. This is where I filmed my videos back in the olden days, when I had an actual uh, video camera. Uh, yes, but that, that camera broke a couple of years ago, two, three years ago now, and I could never quite get the right setup with my tablet recording in this corner, so that's why I've been over in my uh, easy chair in front of my record cabinet for, uh, for the most part. I tried filming here once or twice, it was just a very clumsy, very precarious setup. Uh, but I was at Walmart the other day and found not only did I find a little mini tripod for a cell phone, uh, uh, you know, recording with your cell phone and stuff, and it also doubles as a selfie stick. Not that I'll ever, ever use that feature, but uh, I w I've been able to make some great use of that lately. And also I found at the same spot uh, a an actual mount for a uh, tablet for my old tripod. <laughs> and when I bought it, I thought, I hope I didn't get rid of that old tripod because the camera had to get rid of the camera because it was dead. But no, thankfully, I still had my tripod. It was collecting dust in the corner of my room. And yes, it fits perfectly uh, on the tripod. Tablet works great on it. And so I decided I'm going to make more use of this corner. I'm still kind of experimenting with the lighting. I thought that my overhead light was going to be enough. But I decided just for good measure, I put the, uh, the light that I usually use over in the other spot here to this side. So still experimenting with the lighting. Let me go, let me know what you guys think of the lighting situation here. Uh, but yes, uh, quick little catch up other than that. Um, yes, it's been three weeks again since I gave you guys a video, but I guess I kind of warned you that that might be the case uh, with uh, the yard cleanup from the ice storm that we had last month. Uh, good news though, that yard cleanup is 80, 85% done. So, and I have only, you know, and it only took a month. So that's, that's pretty good. Yeah, we will be renting a wood chipper at some point. We have huge piles, like four or five big piles of tree branches. We've got them staged, gathered in one place uh, for when we get the wood chipper. Uh, just munch that stuff up, use it for mulch in the yard. Uh, but other than that, yard cleanup is going pretty darn well, I have to say. And uh, yeah, what else? I thought there was something else I was going to say. Um, oh, and yes, um, you might remember a few months ago I was talking about my brother and I were going to go up to uh, take a week-long trip up to Seattle uh, this month in February. We decided on that several uh, a few months ago. And then we, uh, after the holidays, we were kind of, we were just kind of meh about it. And so we decided to downscale that to uh, two or three days up in Portland. Uh, unfortunately, then the ice storm happened. And uh, because of the expenses we incurred in the ice storm, we just decided to put the kibosh on any kind of a trip uh, anytime soon. Maybe late spring, early summer, uh, once our finances have rebounded a bit, uh, my brother and I maybe will go up to Portland and uh, hopefully hopefully you guys will get a little Portland vlog and haul sometime this spring or summer. Uh, but I still took the week off of vacation uh, that I had planned for when we were going to go up to Seattle and then Portland. Uh, and this that was last week, and uh, I was able to finally get the theme week that I've been teasing you guys for months and months now. It is uh, very well underway. It's all filmed, partly edited, so uh, hopefully next Monday that will finally come out. Um, that that is my goal for next Monday. I should it all I've got left to do is um, maybe half the editing, so that should be done. It, it's five videos, so uh, it's. A lot of videos, but not a whole lot of editing. The worst ed part of the editing job is done, and that video is rendered. So I've uh, just got four videos to edit and render, and that should be uh, should not take quite so much time. But I wanted to give you guys some kind of a video this week uh, in anticipation of, because I was hoping to get that theme week done this past weekend. Not going to happen. It's going to be next weekend. Uh, so yeah, that theme week will be coming starting next Monday, whatever day that Monday is. I don't have a calendar next to me. Uh, but yes, um, in the meantime, I thought I'd give you a video. Another thing I did on my little mini vacation, my staycation, was uh, another thrift store crawl. St. Vinny's, uh, the, all six St. Vinny's stores I was able to hit over the course of a couple of days in town uh, in lieu of going to the 
record shops up in Portland. Yeah. And hey, thrift store crawls are, uh, excuse me, the CDs aren't behaving themselves. Thrift store crawl is cheap fun. Yeah, so not, you know, you don't have to pay for the Airbnb and all that stuff up in Portland. Uh, not to mention the regular, still reasonable, but much closer to regular prices for CDs up there when uh, they're 99 cents a pop at the St. Vinny's thrift stores in the area. How can you beat that? So I thought I would run through the haul of approximately 30 CDs that I picked up. Uh, and interestingly, uh, most of what I got is instrumental and female vocals. I, I did not consciously uh, go in that direction, but uh, that's what happened. So let's go ahead and dig into the uh, haul that I got here. First of all, first starting with the instrumental stuff. Uh, Tom Grant, uh, this guy is actually uh, from the from Portland, I believe, not from Eugene. But uh, yeah, he's a local guy or a, uh, an in-state, an Oregonian, uh, as I am. And yeah, this is one of his uh, albums on Verve Forecast. I got the other one, I think, in another St. Vinny's Hall. So uh, yeah, this is his album, The View From Here. He is a jazz pianist, I believe. Uh, interesting stuff. I first encountered him on a cassette that I got from a cassette hall from... Uh, uh, gifted to me by a friend of my mother's. Uh, you, you could see that video from a couple of years ago. Uh, I think the video is called Tapes and Tapes, Not the Band. Check that one out if, if you're a fan of cassettes. It's an interesting video. Uh, next up is a um, guitarist, a uh, jazz guitarist that I've got a couple of albums by and uh, kind of a bit of a fan of. Uh, Peter White, this is his album Confidential. And as you can see from the hype sticker, uh, guests include Mindy Abair, who's a jazz saxophonist. Chris Boti, who's a jazz trumpeter that I really enjoy, who is also an Oregonian, by the way. Uh, Paul Brown, Christopher Cross, the uh, pop vocalist, or yacht rock, though I don't really like that term, vocalist from the 80s, singer. And Brian Culbertson, who, spoiler alert, you're going to see in a minute here. But yes, um, this is the third or fourth Peter White CD that I've got. Uh, kind of like the guy. Then I have another CD, or a CD by another artist that I've kind of become a fan of lately. George Winston, the late George Winston. He passed away last year. Uh, I've got a CD that's uh, covers of, um, shoot, what's his name? The guy that did Charlie Brown, uh, Vince Guaraldi, the uh, Charlie Brown musicals and all that other stuff. This is a tribute to The Doors. Interestingly enough, I don't know how this CD is going to be. I haven't listened to, the, to it yet, but it is a solo piano tribute to The Doors. But, you know, Normally when I see this stuff, it's these no-name artists, you know, these labels, this relaxation music that's super cheesy. But this is an artist that I uh, have experience with, George Winston. So I, I have a good feeling about the CD being pretty good. So uh, we shall see. And then another, uh, this is more of a new age, not necessarily jazz uh, group that I have enjoyed over the years, um, Shadow Facts. This is a... Uh, Compil uh, compilation or sampler from the uh, Wyndham Hill label. It's called Pure Shadow Facts. It's got some stuff on it from several of their albums. Pretty cool stuff. And then, familiar name from just a few seconds ago, Brian Culbertson. Uh, I've got two or three of his albums uh, aside from this one, and you know, found this one in this, on the racks and picked it up. So, yeah. Uh, and this one features appearances by Steve Cole, who is a saxophonist, I think. Uh, Marcus Miller and Steve Cole, uh, Rick Braun, who is a jazz trumpetist, trumpeter, trumpetiter, I don't know what he call uh, uh, Rashawn Patterson and Norman Brown, and I'm not sure who they are, but yes, uh, Brian Culbertson does uh, jazz uh, with a with a real funk uh, twist to it. He, a lot of his, the stuff he does is kind of has a funk base to it. It's pretty cool stuff. And I inherited one of the CDs that I inherited from my sister was a Brian Culbertson CD. That's how I got into him. And then we have a jazz pianist that I have uh, a few albums by, David Benoit, and this is his album Every Step of the Way. I enjoy his stuff, so yeah, slowly building a collection of his stuff. And then uh, here's a jazz uh, saxophonist, I believe. I've got one or maybe two albums of two of his albums, and this is a collection, the best of Jeff Lorber. So yeah, good uh, smooth jazz saxophone here. And this one I thought was a vocal album, but uh, she is a, a violinist, uh, Regina, Regina Carter. And this is a tribute album to um, Ella Fitzgerald. So, yeah, that ought to be very nice to listen to. Looking forward to this one. 
And in this one, this is another one that I thought was vocal, but this guy, I believe, is a clarinetist, if I remember correctly, well, after looking him up on Wikipedia. Pete Fountain. It just, it just looked interesting, and it has uh, lots of songs on it, 22 tracks, which is pretty uh, pretty well packed for a CD of this era, the, the early MCA release CDs. Uh, so, yeah. Not afraid to check out stuff that I am not familiar with. You know, what the heck. And then here's an artist, uh, a cellist, a classical cellist that I am familiar with. Uh, enjoy him. He works a lot with, uh, or has worked a lot with John Williams, the film composer, uh, on some of his projects. Yo-Yo Ma, uh, he's won several Grammys and several, uh, I think just Grammys. Uh, yeah, Japanese Melodies is an album of, as the title implies, uh, traditional Japanese tunes. So uh, that should be very interesting. Uh, I do have to be in the mood for world music, but uh, I, I enjoy it when I hear it. I enjoy it when I'm in the mood for it. Let's put it that way. I've uh, got a couple of soundtracks here. I've got the score, not the song soundtrack, which I already have, but the score from Forrest Gump. This is by Alan Silvestri. And I want to do a video on this at some point soon. Uh, movies that I have two soundtracks from in my collection. And, and usually that is the song-based soundtrack and the score soundtrack. So uh, hopefully you'll see a video of that to, on that topic from me sometime soon. Won't take as long, I don't think, as the uh, theme week that's coming up. Uh, and then I got uh, the score from Rocky by Bill Conti. Figured, what the heck. And then another one. Uh, here. I, I'm a fan of the Varez Sarabond label, which you can kind of tell. This was their uh, 80s and 90s spine, the uh, solid burgundy with this uh, serif font on it. I'm a bit of a geek when it comes to uh, the spine... Uh, designs of certain record labels. My brain is a scary place sometimes. The Sixth Sense, uh, the soundtrack, the score from the film by uh, James Newton Howard. And James Newton Howard did uh, one of my favorite scores, uh, which is from The Fugitive, uh, the Harrison Ford, Tommy Lee Jones movie. So I decided to give this one a try. And I also got one um, vocal-based soundtrack, Little Shop of Horrors. I have not seen the movie, so um, I, you know, the, the soundtrack won't have that. Uh, I won't have the context of knowing the movie when I listen to the soundtrack, unless I happen to watch the movie first before listening to this. So, but yes, when I listened to the Doctor Demento show way back in the '80s and early '90s, uh, the track "The Dentist" uh, was uh, a frequent uh, made of frequent appearances on the Doctor Demento show. So that's kind of how I first caught wind of the Little Shop of Horrors soundtrack. Then we're getting into some vocal stuff, uh, male vocal stuff. Uh, this one looked interesting. Peter Sincotti, I think that's how you pronounce uh, his last name. Uh, he was like 20 years old when he put out this album. It's his first album, and it was produced by Phil Ramone. And I guess it uh, set some kind of a record for the youngest artist to have an album in the top 20 or so something like that. I, I saw it on Wikipedia. Don't remember it off the top of my head, but decided to go ahead and pick it up. Um, I always appreciate uh, jazz vocalists. And then this is one that I have appreciated for a long time. George Benson. Sorry about the glare from the tablet. But yes, this is a live album from George Benson. It has, uh, I think it has some of his, judging by the track listing, has some of his vocal work, some of his instrumental work. Uh, it has uh, Give Me the Night, that big hit pop song from the 80s that he was famous for. Uh, so yeah, that should be interesting to listen to live. I've always enjoyed George Benson. This one looked kind of interesting. And it was a little more pricey, but it's three CDs, so I decided to take a shot on it. Uh, Matt Monroe, Songs of Love. It's a three-disc compilation. And yes, it cost a bit more, but I uh, thought, why not give it a shot? And I'm not sure if this is representative of his repertoire. And I believe he's a British uh, vocalist. Um, I mean, usually I steer clear of the love songs compilations just because I like to, you know, when it has too many love songs on it, it gets a little bit boring for me. I like to have some upbeat pop songs as well. So, uh, but hey, give it a shot for, you know, three discs for three bucks. If I don't like it, I trade it in. You know, no huge loss. Then I got a couple of the um, 20th Century Masters Millennium Collection CDs. Uh, New Edition, the R&B group from the 80s and 90s. Figured what the heck. Uh, cool It Now and Mr. Telephone Man are two of their big hits on that one. And then uh, 
I was kind of fascinated to, or surprised, I guess, to see this uh, in a thrift store so soon after his passing, Toby Keith. Uh, not familiar with his stuff, but hey, for 99 cents, give his stuff a shot. Not huge into country, but you know, some country artists I like. If they're if they're too if they're too country, I, they kind of tend to lose me. But you never know. My tastes in country have been slowly been expanding over the years. So then this one I'd kind of been hoping to find at some point. Uh, Clay Aiken. This is his album Tried and True. Uh, I believe it's his most recent album, uh, although it's like 2010 or 2012. Uh, yes, I've got two or three of his albums already. Oh yeah, I can look right here and, and tell you how many of his albums that I have. Hopefully I don't fall off the stool here. Hang on. Uh, <laughs> Clay Aiken. Where are you, Clay? One, two, three of his albums. So yes. And I believe this is his fourth album, so I think my uh, discography of his is complete. Oh, I also have his also have his holiday album. So. Always enjoyed his vocals. Good singer. And this one, never been really crazy about this guy, but hey, for 99 cents, again... Check out his greatest hits, Eddie Money, uh, The Sound of Money. So, yeah. And, of course, um, Two Tickets to Paradise was his big hit. And what was the other one? I can't remember. Anyway. And then this one, uh, you might recall in my year-end video, this case is really badly warped. But the CD, I think, is okay. Um, I had an, an unusual album that I did not expect to be one of my favorites of last year. Uh, from a group called All Time Low. So I found this CD at the thrift store, uh, one of their previous albums, Wake Up Sunshine. Not sure if it is their most recent album besides that, besides the latest one, but or if there's one in between. But I thought, hey, give it a shot. I think that's one that got kind of middling reviews, so and is not one of uh, uh, critics' favorite of their discography, but the heck. Then this one, I had had this one, I don't think not this particular di uh, exact copy of it, but I'd had it before in my collection, uh, traded it in, and since uh, ever since then I've kind of regretted it, or in the last couple of years I've re regretted it, but I found one of their two CDs, uh, Foxy Shazam. It is a rock group that's kind of in, uh, Queen-inspired, a little bit raucous, a little bit rowdy, um, but yes, this is their album, The Church of Rock and Roll. And yeah, that's got uh, yeah, very very much of a Queen sensibility to it. Uh, maybe a little bit of uh, Slade. Yeah, I'm they're probably they're probably inspired by Slade also. So yeah, and so I'm still on the lookout for their debut album as well. So was kind of hoping since I found that one at one of the thrift stores, maybe I'd find the other one at one of the other thrift stores, but no such luck. And then this one was kind of interesting. Uh, it's autographed. Uh, it's uh, the Ten Tenors, which is a uh, uh, Australian. Popra crossover act. It's an album double platinum. It's actually two CDs. Uh, one CD is they cover pop hits and stuff, and the other one is the second disc is classical stuff. And yes, it is autographed by not just three of them, but I found out after I bought it, the other seven have autographed it too. So, what the heck? It desperately needs a new uh, jewel case. As you can see, it's a uh, a big hunk missing out of the uh, top of it, so. But uh, yeah, decided to give those guys a try, see what uh, I like of theirs. And now we're moving into uh, the final section, which is female vocalists and female musicians. This looked like an interesting compilation. Um, Sirens of Song, uh, classic Torch Singers. This has, this is one of those uh, Rhino compilations, so if it's Rhino, you know it's good. Uh, Julie London, Sarah Vaughn, Billie Holiday, Ella Fitzgerald, Judy Garland, Lena Horne, Marlena Dietrich, Eartha Kitt, Edith Piaf, Etta James. I mean, the list goes on. So how could I not leave that sitting? Uh, how could I leave that sitting on the shelf? Had to pick it up. And this one is interesting. I have never heard of this person before, but just uh, thought I'd give her a try. Uh, Ilona Knopfler. And no, despite the uh, unique name, she is actually not related to Mark Knopfler. I looked that up. Uh, but yes, she is a jazz vocalist. This, I believe, is her first album. And I also saw her second album. So I decided to pick them up, give them a try. I, I haven't listened to any of these yet, by the way. None of these. But uh, looking forward to... Uh, the first one here includes Some Kind of Wonderful. Uh, it's the time of the season. I believe that's a cover of the Zombies song. Breaking Up is Hard to Do, the Paul Anka song. Um, Moon Dance, the... Uh, 
Van Morrison hit, Alfie, the Burt Backrack, Hal David song, Unchain My Heart, Don't Let Me Be Misunderstood. So I'm looking forward to listening to, well, both of them, honestly. So, uh, yes. Found that very interesting. With a name like Knopfler, she is actually not related to Mark Knopfler. Go figure. Then we have, uh, I think I might have had this at some point before. Didn't care much for it at the, at the time, but give it another shot. Joan Baez, uh, her greatest uh, greatest hits collection of hers. It's got uh, 20 songs on it, so I'm bound to find something I like of her. I've seen video clips of her singing. Gorgeous voice, beautiful voice, but uh, just have not been able to latch onto her music yet. Maybe this CD will do the trick. And then we have, this one was actually a guy who was looking at the CD racks uh, alongside me. He showed this to me and said, you'll re you really like this album, I promise you. And I said, well, I already like Linda Ronstadt. And, he, and so I figured, okay, go with his recommendation. Uh, this is an album called Winter Light. So yeah, we will see if, uh, if uh, his recommendation, recommendation lives up to the promise. So yes, I do like Linda Ronstadt. I've, got, I've even got a four disc box set of her stuff. So uh, yeah. And another artist that I have my sister to thank for getting me into. Thank you, Kimmy. And then we have a two-disc essential collection of Roseanne Cash. Yes, I've got a couple of her uh, solo albums, uh, or a couple of her uh, Columbia rec uh, label albums, so I'm sure I've got some of the stuff that's on here already. But hey, give a two-disc compilation of hers a shot. Absolutely. And uh, I, I like what I've heard of her on those other albums. Then down to the last two, here we have a collection of Cher, the best of Cher. But this is uh, does not have your uh, run-of-the-mill stuff. This looks like uh, some of her very early stuff. Maybe her first post-Sunny and Cher stuff. Uh, All I really want to do, come and stay with me, where do you go, uh, mama when my dollies have babies. Uh, hey Joe, bang bang, that's that's a big hit of hers. Uh, I feel like something. In, I feel like something's in the air. Come to your window. I want you, and you better sit down, kids. So, some uh, songs that I do not recall. Uh, they they don't sound familiar from the their titles. So, figured uh, a collection of off the beaten path share songs. What the heck? I've got uh, at least one compilation of hers, and at least one studio album of hers. And finally. The booklet on this one is a little bit uh, wrinkled from water damage and whatnot, but I couldn't pass it up. Just Whitney by Whitney Houston. Uh, this is her fifth album, I believe, and uh, the the next one that I'm missing. So I now have Whitney Houston's first five albums, uh, and I'm probably just going to keep on going because I think she only put out seven albums in her lifetime. So when, I've, when I'm only missing two, and I also have her holiday album. So there you go. But yeah, um, I figured this was a pretty good haul. And uh, so, yeah, especially, you know, for 99 cents a piece, how can you resist um, trolling the racks at St. Vinny's, despite the fact that my uh, it is not helping me gain ground on my uh, CD listening backlog? You know, maybe I just need to stop going to the St. Vinny's stores. <laughs> so anyway, uh, what can I say? Uh, I guess I, I love CDs. I'm a compulsive CD buyer. I, I guess that that's it. Maybe Do they have a 12-step program for that? I don't know. But anyway, that'll do it for this video. Be sure to like it if you liked it. And before you go, drop me some feedback in the comment section. I'd love to know what you think. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell icon to catch my future videos, and hit my username to browse my old videos. Links to my socials and my favorite fellow YouTubers are in the description below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.